Good morning and welcome to Morning Special, your morning energy. I'm your host, Chesu Jin. Ray, Paul, let's have a closer look at today's headlines one by one. Ray. Russia has taken control of the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk in Donbass, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has vowed to win back the land. Russia has taken control of the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk in Donbass, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has vowed to win back the land. Russia has taken control of the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk in Donbass, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has vowed to win back the land. Russia has taken control of the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk in Donbass, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has vowed to win back the land. Russia has taken control of the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk in Donbass, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has vowed to win back the land. Russia has taken control of the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk in Donbass, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has vowed to win back the land. Taken now, they've taken full control of the Luhansk region. So mm. Donetsk and Luhansk, that makes up the Donbass. Right. Uh, so now they are in full control of Luhansk. Mm. This does bring them obviously closer to achieving their full goal or achieving their goal of taking over all of the Donbass region. Um, in his nightly televised address to the country, mm. uh, Vladimir Zelensky, obviously he's a Ukrainian president, he said the retreat from Lysychansk was motivated to save the lives of Ukrainian troops. But he did vow to did vow to return, mm. and said this will you know be predicated on the fact that they get more advanced weapons, more modern weapons from the West. 네, 러시아가 계속해서 이 동부 지역 돈바스 지역에 집중을 하고 있는데요. 돈바스 지역의 반에 해당되는 루한스크의 마지막으로 우크라이나가 어, 그래도 거기에 이제 어, 군을 배치하고 있었던 지역 바로 리시찬스크. 에서도 이제 철수를 했다고 합니다. 그렇군요. 함으로 인해서 사실상 이제 이 지역조차도 러시아에게 넘어간 어, 그런 현실입니다. 그러나 이제 우크라이나 대통령이 반드시 이 창을 이, 이 땅을 되찾을 것이다. He's going to win back the land. He's going to bring it back. That's what he says. Yeah. He, he, he's basically vowed to return to Lysychansk at mm. some point in time, but they do need more weapons in order to do this because right. The Ukrainian army said that they were severely outgunned mm. in Lissy Chance. You know, the Russians have multiple advantages artillery, aircraft, manpower, Indeed. kind of everything. All right. Well, let's have a reread of that headline, Paul. Russia has taken control of the Ukrainian city of Lysychansk in Donbass, but Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has vowed to win back the land. 자, 그럼 두 번째 headline 가보겠습니다. 이번에는 Paul, could you read this for us? Turkish authorities have reportedly detained a Russian cargo ship accused of carrying stolen grain from Ukraine. 터키의 당국이 우크라이나에서 빼돌린 곡물을 운반한 혐의가 있는 러시아 화물선을 억류한 것으로 알려졌습니다. 자, 여기서 이제 터키에는 우리가 그동안에 터키라고 불렀던 어, 나라인데요. 이제 어, 그 나라 이름을 이렇게 불러 달라라고 유엔에서 공식 요청을 했었기 때문에 저희도 지금 이제 터키에라고 부르고 있습니다. But we are of course talking about Turkey as we know it. Yes. Okay, tell us more. Uh, we had the ambassador to Turkey, Vasil Bondar, going on Ukrainian TV on Sunday and saying that the Turkish custom authorities had seized this vessel that was traveling from the Russian-occupied port of uh, Berdyansk and that Ukraine had full cooperation with Turkey's customs authorities. So this vessel, the Zhebek Zhuli, was waving the Russian flag. It was intercepted by Turkish authorities near the port of Karasu in Turkey and it came came after Ukraine asked Turkey to take urgent measures against the vessel, accusing uh, the ship of carrying grain that was seized from Russian-controlled areas of Ukraine. Of course, Moscow denies these claims. Uh, and investigators uh, were meant to be meeting yesterday. We're yet to see what the result may be, but certainly Ukraine wants its grain back. 네, 주 터키 우크라이나 대사에 의하면은요, 터키 당국에서 이제 러시아 화물선을 어, 억류했는데 이 화물선에는 우크라이나의 곡물이 이제 실어져 있다. 빼돌린, stolen, 그런 grain이라고 지금 알려져 있습니다. 러시아에서는 부인하고 있는데요. 어, 이렇게 그 diplomatic sources가 전하고 있는 내용이니만큼 외신에서 집중적으로 다루고 있습니다. We're already short on grain and yes. um, I think they need to get back whatever they can really. Uh, absolutely and with the defeat of Lysychansk, it's Ukraine doing everything they can to, to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. 음, 그래요. 그래서 여기서의 detained는 구금하다인데 여기서는 억류했다라는 의미로 보시면 되겠습니다. Ray, could you read that headline for us one more time? Turkish authorities have reportedly detained a Russian cargo ship accused of carrying stolen grain from Ukraine. 자, 다음 헤드라인입니다. 이번에는 레이가 읽어 줄게요. 
Three people have been killed in a shooting after a 22-year-old gunman opened fire in one of Denmark's biggest shopping malls. 덴마크 최대 쇼핑몰 중한 곳에서 22세의 괴한이 총기를 난사해 세 명이 사망했습니다. Oh dear, what happened? Well, the suspect, he's been described as poli- by police as an ethnic Dane. He was in possession, uh, possession of a rifle and ammunition when he was arrested. Uh, he has been charged with murder. Mm. Um, the shopping mall is located on the outskirts of Copenhagen. And as it mentions in the headline, it's one of the biggest in Denmark, one of the biggest in all of Scandinavia, actually. Uh, the gunman killed three people and he injured uh, four others. One person remains in, in critical condition. Mm. Um, now, police have said there is no indication that other Inta- other attackers were involved. However, um, the shooter did have mental health issues, uh, but there was no indication of a terror motive, ah, which is okay. one good thing. Uh, the suspect will be sent to a psychiatric ward for the next 24 days. Ah, 그렇군요. 처음에 이 소식이 속보로 전해졌을 때는 이것이 테러리즘인지 아닌지도 살펴보겠다라는 당국의 입장도 있었는데요. 좀 업데이트된 상황을 보니까 테러리즘은 아니다. 아, 개별적으로 개인적으로 행동한 것이고 그동안에 정신 어 문제에 그런 이력이 있었고 또 앞으로도 그 사이키아트릭 워드라고 하는 것은 정신 병동이죠. 어 거기에서 이제 치료를 받을 것으로 보여지는데 살인 혐의가 적용이 됐습니다. He has been charged with murder. He has been charged with murder mm. and yeah, it doesn't look good for him. No. But horrible story. Horrible. Absolutely. And there's another I just read a similar thing happened in the US at a 4th of July celebration. 그러게 말입니다. 미국에서도 4th of July 때문에 지금 파레이드를 하고 있는데 거기에서도 총기 난사가 어, 발생해서 I think at least 5 people have died, yeah. maybe 6. Yeah, it's somewhere around there and the, apparently the gunman's yeah. at large. And that just happened. That just happened yeah, oh. a few hours ago. 그러니까요. 네, 저희 시간으로는 새벽에 어, 미국에서 또 총기 난사 사건이 발생했다라는 소식이 들어오고 있습니다. The gunman is at Large means he hasn't been caught. They don't know where he don't is. Don't know yeah. where he is. Yeah. Oh, 그래요. 어, 아직 붙잡히지 않았다고 합니다. 이제 그건 미국의 소식인데요. 일단 저희가 지금 전해드리는 세 번째 헤드라인에서 덴마크 코펜헤겐에 있는 쇼핑몰 아주 큰 쇼핑몰에서 이렇게 20대의 한 괴한이 총기를 난사해서 세 명이 사망했다는 굉장히 안타까운 소식입니다. Paul, let's read that one more time. Three people have been killed in a shooting after a 22-year-old gunman opened fire in one of Denmark's biggest shopping malls. All right, let's move on to our next headline. Health experts have warned that Washington has been too slow to respond to monkeypox and that the US is at risk of losing control of the disease. 보건 전문가들은 원숭이 두창에 대한 미국 정부의 대응이 너무 늦으며 미국이 이 질병에 대한 통제력 상실 위기에 있다고 경고했습니다. Give us the details. Uh, yes, well these experts are saying that the slow response by Washington mirrors the worst parts of the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about severely limited testing, a sluggish rollout of vaccines, as well as a lack of streamlining access to the best therapeutics. Uh, The government, Biden's administration, on the other hand, their officials say they are confident in their approach. However, at the moment, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, say that there are 460 cases in 30 states, as well as Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. And experts are saying there's likely to be more cases out there, that this is an undercount, most likely, Mm. because those who may be infected may not have access to widespread testing. So the government is increasing access to vaccines. It is expanding its testing capacity. Mm -hmm. But some experts fear this is too little too late. 네, 어, 미국의 보건 전문가들은요. 지금 어, 바이든 행정부가 monkeypox, 원숭이 두창에 대해서 너무 늑장 대응을 하고 있다라고 얘기를 하고 있습니다. 그러면서 팬데믹 초기에 미국이 COVID에 대응한 것이랑 굉장히 비슷한 모습이다라고 하면서 It mirrors the worst parts of the early days of the pandemic라고 했어요. 그러니까 늘 늑장 대응을 한 것은 아니지만 그렇게 했던 모습을 지금 마치 거울을 빗대어서 똑같이 반영하는 것처럼 너무나 비슷한 모습이다, similar하다라는 의미로 
말로 it mirrors the response라고 얘기를 하고 있고요. A sluggish rollout of vaccines. 백신 보급이 너무나 민달팽이처럼 느리다. 이런 의미가 되겠죠. 그 다음에 limited testing. 검사도 너무나 제한적이고. 그러다 보니까 지금 충분히 이 원숭이 두창에 대한 통제를 할수 있음에도 불구하고 하지 못한다라고 보고 있는 것 같습니다. 실제로 미국에서 지금까지 460명의 이 원숭이 두창 환자가 나왔다고 합니다. 그런데 실제로는 더 많을 수도 있다라는 게 보건 전문가들의 얘기고요. 바이든 행정부는 they are confident in their approach. 어, 부족하지 않다. 늑, 늑장 대응이 아니다. 지금 최선을 다해서 하고 있다라고 말하고 있습니다. Ray, let's read this one more time. Health experts have warned that Washington has been too slow to respond to monkeypox and that the and that the U.S. is at risk of losing control of the disease. All right, let's move on to our final headline. At least seven hikers have died following an avalanche set off by a large chunk of alpine glacier that broke loose in the Italian Alps. 이탈리아 알프스에서 거대한 빙하 덩어리가 붕괴하면서 일어난 눈 사태로 최소 일곱 명의 등산객이 사망했습니다. This is terrifying. Tell us about it. Well, it sure is. So at least seven people have been killed. Emergency officials said around nine others were injured in the collapse. Two people suffering very serious injuries. They're in critical mm. condition. Um, a number of people remain missing, unaccounted for. Uh, some reports have it around 13, 14. Some mm. are up around 17. So more than a dozen, less than 20, let's put it that way, uh, remain unaccounted for. Uh, rescue teams were using helicopters and drones to search for people but mm. uh, they were severely hampered yesterday by thunderstorms it is a developing story sure so is. we're getting updates um right now as we speak mm. uh, 계속해서 이 수치가 업데이트 되고 있는 상황입니다 이럴 때 우리가 뉴스에서 it's a developing story 라고 말할 수 있는데요 아직 종결된 게 아니고 계속해서 상황이 진행 중이라는 뜻이 되겠습니다 어, 어제 처음에는 여섯 명의 사망자가 나온 것으로 그렇게 파악이 된다고 했는데 또 새벽 사이에 한 명의 사망자가 더 늘어났고요. 부상자의 수치도 지금 이제 외신마다 조금씩 다르게 보도를 하고 있습니다만 뭐, 어, 뭐 최소 아홉 명, 뭐그 이상도 나올 것으로 보여지고 어, 두명 내지는 세명 정도는 또 지금 굉장히 위중한 상태다라고도 얘기를 하고 있습니다. 그 다음에 지금 실종자도요, 17명에서 뭐 19명 사이에 여러 가지 보도가 지금 나오고 있습니다. Now, some people say it might be the climate warming that caused the ice to break off and and cause this? Right, right. So it wasn't immediately clear what caused this to happen. Right, right. But a, a spokesperson for the rescue service told State TV that the area had been experiencing unusually high temperatures in recent days, uh, reaching 10 degrees Celsius at the glacier's peak. Oh, so it certainly good. sounds like But, climate change yeah. is at mm. least somewhat responsible for this. 네, 정확한 원인은 아직 파악이 되지 않고는 있으나 그렇지만 이그 정상에 산 정상에 원래는 얼음으로 완전히 덮여 있는 산입니다. 이탈리아의 이제 알프스 산맥 쪽인데요. 근데 거기가 최근에 한 10도씨 정도를 기록했다고 해요. 그러면은 상당히 높은 기온이죠. 얼음으로 꽁꽁 얼려 있어야 되는 지역이. 그렇기 때문에 어 지구 온난화로 인해서 이렇게 그 글레이셔가 떨어져 나간 것이 아니겠느냐라는 얘기들도 나오고 있습니다. 참고로 여기서 알파인 글레이셔라고 했는데요. 알파인 그러면 보통 이제 알프스의라는 의미로 볼수 있습니다. Let's read it one more time. At least seven hikers have died following an avalanche set off by a large chunk of alpine glacier that broke loose in the Italian Alps. Well, those have been today's morning special headlines.